Hi, everybody. I'm Anthony. I go by Coin, and I'm one of the developers of Starkiller and Empire. I'm also here with Jake and Vince. Hey, I'm Jake. I go by Hubble. I'm also one of the developers for Starkiller and Empire. And I'm Vince. I created Starkiller, and I'm the lead developer. So uh, we're going to be talking about Starkiller today, which is our threat emulation platform that we use for red teaming. What this allows us to do is to have an intuitive interface that multiple users can log in from and interact with the team server, as well as it has some hooks built into it uh, to the MITRE ATT&CK framework that gives links to techniques uh, with inside of all our modules. And what this setup allows us to do is to have our teams most accurately emulate uh, the threats for our assessments. Since we're trying to emulate that threat, what we're really focusing on is trying to make sure that we're replicating their TTPs, all those tactics, techniques, and procedures. Since this is what, we're, this is what the threat is going to use to obtain their objectives, we're gonna make sure that everything we do in our tests focus around what the threat's going to uh, be and be representative. Uh, that includes our infrastructure. Uh, we wanna make sure that our infrastructure mirrors exactly what an APT setup is going to look like. For example, our stagers pay and payloads, as well as our implants, will mirror the threats. Our setup will typically include multiple operators across different locations, all connected to the team server. They may be spread out as well um, to make sure that everything is segregated. So that way, if one server goes down, we're not going to lose our entire uh, operation and burn it. Uh, we want to make sure that our, our, our infrastructure mirrors what the threat's going to do and are going to be able to emulate what uh, they're going to be running for their attacks. So what you kind of saw in the diagram before is, is that Starkiller is the UI that connects to our team server. So Starkiller provides a, a UI on top of the, the C2 server, uh, in this case, Empire, and it allows us to interact as a team. So we have multi-user support. We have a live reporting interface. Uh, so anytime a team member runs uh, a module or a command, we're able to instantly see those, those commands through the interface, and it simplifies a lot of the workflows that are a little bit more tedious through the CLI. So as we mentioned, M Starkiller is a GUI interface that interacts with the Empire C2 server. Empire is built on PowerShell and Python, for those of you that aren't aware. Uh, with the addition of Starkiller, it can now be ran as either a team server and all in one C2, which means just a person's running the C2 on the command line directly, like there's no other infrastructure required for to run that C2. It has a bunch of adaptive modules, we're up to about 300 now. And then the original project ended support back in August of 2019, but we forked it and have been maintaining and updating it ever since, which is why we built Starkiller on top of it. And we really built Starkiller to address some of the shortfalls that Vincent meant mentioned to allow for threat emulation and just like a modern red team engagement when using Empire as your primary C2. So ever since we forked Empire when it was originally, when support was originally ended, we get asked a lot why we still think PowerShell is important because there's a whole bunch of mitigations in place, you know, like script block logging and AMZ and all those kinds of things that do make PowerShell much more difficult when it is implemented properly. But even though red teams have started moving on to C Sharp and other .NET tradecraft and Microsoft has started kind of focusing protections elsewhere, PowerShell is still a huge attack vector that's utilized like every day by APTs. CrowdStrike came out with a report in 2019 that said as many as 90% of breaches use PowerShell in some way. Now that doesn't mean that PowerShell is their primary means of operations or even this, the majority of what's being done, but it's still used in 90% of breaches according to CrowdStrike. So it, we still think it's really worthwhile for red teams to emulate threats using PowerShell because even though all, though all those mitigations do exist for it, we still see many, many organizations that are vulnerable to PowerShell because they don't have those mitigations properly implemented. So what we have here is our team server setup running Empire. Uh, we also have multiple Starkiller instances uh, all connected to that team server. That team server is then sitting in a secure location uh, that could be either in the cloud or at like one of our offices. 
There is then a secure line directly into our uh, server, our cloud server. In this case, it's AWS. Uh, that cloud server is then going to reach out to all of our redirectors. Uh, we have these multiple redirectors up in case one of them gets burned. And that way, if it does happen, we don't lose our entire infrastructure. Why we do this is this setup allows us to rebuild certain parts of our infrastructure very easily uh, so we don't lose critical pieces. Yeah, and then just another advantage of setting up our infrastructure this way is it allows us to really lock down our Empire server on top of using like reverse port forwarding to connect to the AWS server so that the Empire server can't be accessed directly from outs from external our network. We can also lock down it, it down internally because we can basically lock everything down except for the Starkiller ports. And that way, if our network is compromised, it limits the ability for an attacker to access the Empire server and more importantly, access the customer data that we're going to be handling since many times that data is extremely sensitive. So really, the, the main two goals for Starkiller for us is one, we want to make our, um, our workflows for red teams to be more efficient. And we do that by um, eliminating some of the menu options that were in Empire and making them more simplified. Previously in Empire, what you had to do is you had to memorize or go through multiple menus to be able to set up your listeners, your stagers, and your modules. Uh, through Starkiller, what you have now is you have these menus that are pre-populated. Sometimes they have drop-down menus. Um, and this makes workflows much, much easier for teams. Uh, the second thing is the team-oriented engagements. Uh, with Empire previously, you can only have one person logged in at a time. Uh, they're using that command line interface. And if somebody else wanted to do an engagement, you have to stand up a completely separate server. Now with Starkiller, you can have multiple users all using the same team server. They can share credentials. They can share the results from their modules. And they can generate a single report for their entire engagement. Yeah, and then just to add a little more to that, um, we're good. We plan on future growth for this capability as well, but it also provides more oversight for the team lead by giving them a centralized location to see what their operators are doing, what things have been done, as well as like when things are ran on individual boxes and that kind of thing. It gives them a centralized location to see all that data and keep an eye on the operation as it's pro progressing. So setting up Starkiller uh, is fairly simple. When you run Empire, you're gonna pass the REST parameter, which tells it to run the REST API. There's a default login and password, which you can change. Uh, and then to actually run Starkiller, you can either download the installer for Windows, Mac OS, or Linux off of the releases page on GitHub, or there's instructions in the readme to build it from the source. All right, thanks guys. Uh, we're gonna demo the features of Starkiller now. So Vince has a uh, instance set up already uh, back into our personal range uh, where Empire is already running on a team server. And then we have Starkiller connecting into that. Okay, so this is the Starkiller login page. I'm gonna log in using the default username and password. And we're connecting to uh, an Empire instance that we have uh, that we already have running. When I go to the settings page, um, we can change our, our password, we can turn dark mode on and off, and we have access to our API token for, uh, for connecting to the Empire API. This is useful if you want to interact with the Empire API outside of Starkiller, or if you wanted to use some other tool like Death Star to interact with, with the Empire API. The next piece is the user management page. So on this page, we get a list of, of all the users that have an account for Starkiller. We can see when they when they last logged in and we're able to enable and disable those users. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and create a user account for myself with the password of password. And we can see that I now have an account. So the next thing is the modules list page. So this page gives you a list of all of the modules that um, we have access to in our instance of Empire. And using the search box, we can search down by the name of the module. We can search down by the 
um, MITRE attack techniques, and also um, the descriptions of the modules. So here I'm going to filter down by a MITRE attack technique, and I get uh, the two modules that that are in this in this technique. And if I click into it, it'll bring us to the to the web page for that MITRE attack technique, so that we can um, get more information about it. And then here, if we expand uh, an individual module, we can get the author information. We can get the description about that module. And then often the, the comments will have a link back to the source material for that module. OK, so this is the listeners list page. And here we can see all the listeners that have already been created in Empire. Uh, so let's go ahead and create another one. We're going to choose a type, and then once we choose that type, we get the form pre-filled out with, with all the defaults, and we're going to go ahead and just update this so it doesn't overlap with the previously created, and any optional fields are just in this uh, expandable context here. I'm going to submit, and that listener has been created. The next page is the stagers page. Stagers are the initial payload that we send to the agent to initiate the connection back to our C2 server. So you can see that we already have a couple stagers created here, um, but I'm gonna go ahead and generate a couple more. So the first one that I'm gonna create is a multi-launcher, and we're gonna have it connect to the listener that I just created, and we're gonna keep the rest of the settings the same. Up here, I can expand the information box, and that'll give us some more info about the stager. OK, so that one's been created. Now I'm going to create one more. This one is going to be a downloadable DLL. And again, I'm going to choose the listener that we just created. I'm going to hit Submit. OK, so now that we've created those two stagers, we can see um, some information about it, which listener it connects back to, the language, and when it was created. And then over here, we have the ability to copy or download. So this first one that we generated, multi-launcher, uh, has a little paperclip icon. And when you click that, it copies it to the clipboard, because this is a, like a one-liner that you can then paste into a command prompt or a, your, your PowerShell window. And the second one here has a download icon because it's a, a file. And you can download this file and then get that to your target however you need to get, get it to them. Yeah, and, and something that's really nice about this over Empire is that our stagers remain persistent, uh, not only for when we change between menus, but also like if you log out of Starkiller and then log back in, like your agents will still be there. Because in Empire, as soon as, especially when we create like one liners, as soon as we move to another menu, it's gone and we have to regenerate it and then cut and paste it and, and save it and all those things. Whereas Starkiller just keeps it all in one place for us and saves it between, uh, you know, sessions and all that kind of stuff, which is just significantly more convenient than operating directly in Empire. Okay, so now that we've, uh, sent the, those stagers out. We've gotten some, some callbacks into our Empire server. And so that brings us to the, the agents list. And here we can see all of the agents that have called back to us. We can see um, the last time they checked in. We can see the username of the account that we're connected to. And if we click into it, that brings us to probably the screen that you'll spend the most time in when you're using Starkiller, which is the agent interaction screen. And this is where I'm going to hand it off to Coin to talk about interacting with agents. So what we have here is our agent screen, as Vince talked about before. This allows us to do our shell commands, uh, as well as execute modules. Uh, there's a couple of nice features here. Uh, what you can see at the bottom is Hubble actually just ran something. This interface allows multiple users to interact with the same agent. And every command that you run is going to be tagged with the username that you have associated with yourself. So for example, I ran earlier, I set my beacon to be delay zero, um, and I ran that command under my Empire admin account, while Hubble ran who am I, and then he got his results back. 
Um, I can also go in here and I can go to shell commands. I can type in PS just like they would in Empire to get my process list. It's now going to run that. It puts it in a queue. Um, all commands are set into a queue uh, regardless of who sends it and it will execute that queue throughout and then drop all the uh, results in the screen. Your results aren't just going to be in the screen. It's also saved in a database that then gets populated on a reports page. Uh, so everything everybody does will be aggregated together into one master log. Um, and you can see here uh, the process list just came back. So you can come in, take a look. I can scroll through and see all the different processes that are running, as well as I can also adjust the size of this screen if I wanted to expand it a little bit as well. Next is the modules. Uh, so you have access to all the modules that are inside of Empire. Uh, it's nice because you don't have to navigate all the menus. You can actually come in here and just type in exactly what you want to run. So I can type in Mimikatz. Uh, in this case, we're actually going to run Sherlock. I come in, select Sherlock, just a nice little tool that will allow me to look at some privilege escalation opportunities. Uh, we still have access to those um, MITRE attack techniques from before, so I can click on those, as well as a description and an information about the module I want to run. So once I hit Submit, uh, it's going to run that module, it's going to queue it up, and then we'll get the results, and we can see that later in the reporting function. Next, we're going to go over into a elevated process agent, so that way we can show off another feature. So now I can come in here, now that I'm in an elevated process, I can go in and run some techniques that maybe I don't have access to under a normal user, such as Mimikatz. So I'm going to go in, I'll pull up Mimikatz, I have all the same interface stuff as well. I'm going to hit submit there as well. So now both of those are queued up and I can see those results later uh, inside of my reporting function. So now we're going to look at the credentials page. And you can see here we already have a couple entries from running Mimikatz. And so the, the nice thing about this credentials page is it's central to everybody, all of the team members engaging it on this Empire server. So whether I run Mimikatz or Hubble is is getting credentials, they're all going to be dumped to this page, and we can we can all see all of the credentials and these password hashes are going to be useful to us when we want to try to do lateral movement. Now, the, the last piece uh, that we want to show you with Starkiller is this reporting interface. It's going to show you in order of when it ran, when a command was run on an agent, who ran it, and what the response was. So for example, um, this is the last command that was run. We can see that it was run by Empire Admin, which is me. And we can see the agent that it was run on. And we can see the full output of, of that command. And now just a side note here, uh, you'll notice this function name is just a random five character string. Um, that's one of the, the features that are built into Empire for keyword randomization. So this function name is just a random five character string. That string is um, typically known as Mimikatz. And so that randomization just allows us to um, prevent strings that are known flags from showing up in memory when Empire is being ran. Okay, so now if we expand another one, we can see uh, the output of the PS command in, it, in its entirety. And this page is really useful to the, the operator of the, the engagement so that they can get a, a holistic view of all of the different things that are going on during the engagement. So at the at the bottom of Starkiller, we have links to the Empire and Starkiller repos. We'd love to get feature requests and bug tickets um, that we can fix, and we look forward to your feedback.